Litter. We've all seen it, and we know it's there. But do you really know the true effect of litter once it enters the water? The world generated over 400 million metric tonnes of plastic in the last 12 months, 130,000 of which has leaked into Australian waterways. Now numbers are one thing, but it's time to understand these stats in the real world and the impact this is having on our fish and wildlife. That is why I've come here, the Womble Macquarie River, a place that locals say is on the tipping point when it comes to the amount of rubbish that is starting to show up. I must admit, even though we're a long way away from any capital city, it kind of reminds me of one because of all the rubbish. Now you're a local, is, is it a serious problem here? Yeah, definitely. Still a big problem here, unfortunately. Right. Um, you know, particularly in these popular spots where people come to fish, you see chip packets, you know, the plastic bottles back there. Yep. Yeah, everything. Is that the story for the next 100 metres? Like, like you said, we're in a popular spot here, but if I went to a little snag down the, down the road, you reckon it's the same story? Yeah, well, snags in particular catch everything yep. that's floating down the river, so, yep. No good. Well, can we go have a look? Yeah. Let's do it. The Womble Macquarie River in central western New South Wales is a very long way from any major capital city. Many blame our litter problems on big cities and population growth. But all it took was a 50 metre walk along the river to find that every community has a role to play, no matter how big or small you are. Look at this. So we're on the banks of Bronze Local Waterway and this has to be 50, 70 metres, maybe more of braided fishing line. So there's a big clump of it in there. It's probably 30 pound, 20 to 30 pound braided fishing line with some monofilament leader. There she is. Look at that. Only a couple metres from the bank. So Brian, is this come from, you know, the flood or has someone left this here? What do you reckon? Yeah, I'd say it's washed down in the flood, got caught in that tree. Unfortunately, and that's what happens. Even all the litter along the river. Yeah, yeah. you know, it just a, ends up. It's a big problem. Yeah. Look at that, like that's trapping all this dead brie here, imagine what it's gonna do in there. And all it would take is a bit of breeze. Look, I'll knock that off there like that. And she's all over. Yeah. Put that in our little kitty and keep moving. Yep. Yeah, look, there's fishing line even here. So what's that tangled? Someone's just left it, you know, and it's out. Yeah. Is it a set line or is it? Pull it, see what happens. Oh, that is oh. deep. That is buried deep. That has yeah. been there for a long time. Yep. Oh no, that is like, that's like 60 or 80 pounds. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Cool. Woo. You're coming with us. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> it soon became apparent on this walk that litter is not just the problem of any single group or activity. As expected, fishing line and tackle was found close to boat ramps and bridges. But as we walked further, we found everything. Chairs, tyres, plastic bags, bottles and smaller plastic items. All of which have made their way into the water really? over time. Thank yep. you proud to be Australian? Yeah. I actually have no words for that no, one. No, not <laughs> I. have started my journey here to mimic one of the birthplaces of rubbish on our inland rivers. Waterways like this one are the lifeblood of Australia. They feed our agriculture, are the birthplace of regional towns, have a rich cultural connection and support our way of life. But the very thing we love about them, the fact they carve their way through our land carrying nutrient rich water, also turns litter into a very, very big problem. Now the birthplace for litter can be anywhere, shopping centres, park, urban embankments like this. And through the process of wind, rain and natural drainage, unfortunately it's going to go through the riparian zone like this one here and end up in our waterways. Now for some of it, it's going to stay here on the doorstep of Dubbo and be a nuisance for fish. It gets caught up in bridge fire lines and snags. Others, well it's going that way on a hundred plus kilometre journey to a new town and it will most likely break down into what we call microplastics. Now I only know a little bit about microplastics, but I know someone who does and he lives a long way that way. So I'm going to go visit him and show you how a little bottle, chip packet or plastic bit of rubbish can soon turn into a global problem. It is not just a problem for our inland rivers, but for all waterways across Australia. As I drove east and across new waterways, tributaries and bridges, it made me realise how interconnected our waterways are. With the majority of our litter being so buoyant, 
particularly once it's broken down into small bits of plastic, most of it will take a similar route to me and end up somewhere on the coast. That's why I'm meeting up with Matt Landos, a veterinary scientist who has studied the impacts of contaminants like plastics, chemicals and other pollutants in our waterways. Over the years, Matt has seen his fair share of litter and has been able to piece together the different ways it can travel between our systems and be a problem for fish all across the country. So Matt, what is a microplastic? So microplastics start as big pieces of plastic like this lid and then with time, wave action, banging around in the sea onto the rocks, they break up and we end up with particles under five millimetres in size. Right. So these little fragments we describe as a microplastic and they don't stop there, they keep going, getting ground down smaller and smaller until they become an, what we call a nanoplastic. And a nano is 10 to the minus 9, so it's 0.00000001. So tiny. Many of them will fit on the top of a head of a pin. Right, and they all start just like a, a bottle lid, a coffee cup, a bit of styrofoam. Yep, a piece of polypropylene piece. rope. Right. This is where it begins. Yep. and then it ends up in our marine environment, ends up in our aquatic environment yep. uh, and begins to cause problems. Matt tells me that despite being on the edge of a national park, we won't have any trouble finding hundreds of pieces of plastic and litter within a matter of minutes, all of which have come from systems, rivers and even countries a long way away. Unfortunately for us, he was right with us filling our pockets within a couple of minutes. The fish picked them up. <laughs> Their eyesight's very good. It, when, you're, when your life depends upon it, you need to have good eyesight. Yep. And so the baby fish, they are hunting around looking for the ideal particle size. And it's very unfortunate that plastic can look an awful lot like a food particle. I'd like to say I'm proud of those efforts, but <laughs> I don't think I can say that now. We've got, I'm going to say, I don't know, the best part of 50 pieces of plastic here. And I have a sneaky suspicion, Matt, that whilst we got them off the beach, that's not their final resting place. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. And look, they both didn't start on the beach. Yep. They arrived there. Yep. They may well have come down a freshwater system. Yep. <clears throat> washed down, come down with a flood, even just run with normal flow. Yep. Coming down our systems, blown into a waterway. But these particles, you can see these small pieces, you know, they, they break up into smaller and smaller fragments. Yep. And as they get smaller, they get lighter. And when they're really light, they're able to be kicked up by the wind and moved again. Mm. So their final resting place may not be this national park. <laughs> it may in fact be back inland again. Right. These particles can move a long distance. They cross boundaries, they cross borders. So they don't obey too many rules, unfortunately. So this, as it gets smaller, can break right down and become something that ends up looking like a piece of fish food or a piece of food for a zooplankton. Right. And inadvertently getting eaten. And when it gets eaten, it brings with it the plasticizers that made it nice and flexible. The fact that it just crimps over like that Yep. is because we've put other chemicals into the plastic polymer to allow it to have that property. And these chemicals that are within plastic are harmful to the development of aquatic animals. The chemicals Matt is talking about here are the ones that we insert into the plastic to give it utility. It's what turns plastic from just something that a fish mistakenly eats and struggles to digest to something that is altering the way it behaves, acts and reproduces. With some time to kill, Matt showed me firsthand what all this means out on his local waterway. Hey John, have a look at this. Oh, you actually, actually pumped a yabby, mate. Yeah, Can not you... an amateur. Yeah, John, so look, this is, a, this is a ghost snipper. These little crustaceans, you can see huge populations of them here in this estuarine sand flat. Yeah. And they're playing a critical role, turning over the sediment allowing oxygen from the water to permeate through, but also processing the organic matter that's in that sediment. Now, but what we're increasingly finding in our rivers is that the sediment is contaminated now with microplastics and nanoplastics. And these critters end up consuming that, 
as part of their browsing, inadvertently, unintentionally, but for them it's going to be bad news. The plastics can be accumulating some of the toxins from our environment, different chemicals that have come in, be it from wastewater, mm -hmm. from agricultural runoff, or from stormwater, can build up and then end up in, in them. And, that, and because of the way the food chain works, a brim or a whiting or a flathead that eats that, it's a flow on effect. It's a flow on effect. And we see these things being able to move through yep. the food web and unfortunately take some of their toxin load with them. Now where these toxins become critical is that they impact on the reproduction of these animals. So they're making them less fertile. They're making less of their progeny survive. And, and that's problematic for us as fishermen when there's quite a few of us and we are chasing the fish, but there are less fish being made, surviving through these early life stages and less of our crustaceans coming through our life stages. That catches a fish, right? We should uh, put that in a hook. Well, you keep going. I'll be taking him things. <laughs> All right, I'll get a couple more. Got him. Matty boy. Oh, nicely done, Jono. Someone had to do it. <laughs> we could not, uh, we couldn't help ourselves. We just pulled into a little cove and a yellowfin brim has climbed all over the yabby that Matt pumped. Now, Matt, from all accounts, what you've told me today, as I give myself a bit of line there, this is a high chance that a brim like this, which is one of our core recreational species, has microplastics within it. Is that right? Yes, unfortunately, Jono, that's, that's true today. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with is this guy, because he's eating things out of the food web and his food web has become contaminated with micro and nanoplastics, he in inadvertently ends up consuming some of them and some of them can end up within the fish. Well, and that's the case for salt, freshwater, Murray cod, golden perch, whatever it may be. If they're feeding out of the sediments, then there's a high chance that they're also feeding on microplastics. That's right. So whether they're sediment feeders or they're eating the things that were in the sediment, yep. it can end up inadvertently in them. Wow. It's a sobering reality. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, I asked something that I must admit I thought was a myth. Better. So true or false, self-help or self-care products could be within our fish? Well, unfortunately, true. So... Uh, yeah. So our personal care products can contain a whole range of things, some of which go straight through our wastewater treatment plants, mm -hmm. end up back into a river and, and then end up into our fish. The litter story is far from over, with a big piece of this puzzle in what we can do about it and our direction moving forward. On this trip, I've discovered there is plenty of ways we can play our part. As fishers, you can make sure your tackle is organised and our knots are sound and tight. Fishing line is a big problem in the equation, and it starts with us. For river lovers, our campfires and picnics should all end the same way, cleaning up the mess we've created. If you see anyone leave something behind, say something and speak up for our waterways. As stewards of our waterways, look for opportunities to give back. Bron from Dubbo loves kayaking and has devoted a portion of her trip every time collecting snagged lures and repurposing them for the local community. Experts like Matt and others call for greater consideration when you're doing your shopping. Matt says little things like buying plastic free products or taking your own bag will all play a big part in this. For me, I've learnt that this is not just one town's problem. It's one of the biggest human developed problems of our lifetime and it impacts every waterway in Australia. This is not a time for blaming, but a time for everyone to come together and make litter a problem that we are all talking about. At Ozfish, we're tackling this problem head on. We are committed to run a national program that helps fishers reduce their waste footprint, reuse and recycle their gear and clean up their fishing spots. Through our chapters and our volunteers, we know that we can make a difference. To find out more about this project and to get involved, join the Blue Army of Volunteers Making a Difference. By becoming a member, you are becoming a part of the solution.
Ausfish is committed to change. And with our partners on a project like this, which includes BCF, Shimano, the Australian Recreational Fishing Foundation, and the New South Wales Environment Protection Authority, we are well placed to make big changes and ensure our fishers are leading the way in keeping their waterways clean.